invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. <laughs> Vasco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write and tell her about his adventures. So now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes to Mama Vasco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, <laughs> it was a pleasure to read your last letter, especially when you're writing about when I was a little boy. Yes, it's true. I'm always was the slow one in the family. Take even a thing like America. I'm a discoverer to 450 years after Columbus. <laughs> Tomorrow, Mamma Mia, all Americans are going to celebrate the Columbus Day. You know, it's a lucky thing for Columbus. He's a decide to discover America in 1492. Because if he's tried to discover it today, and he's got the nobody to bring him over from Italy... He's a never going to get a past the immigration department. <laughs> Mamma mia, if Columbus could only see his America, how it's a look today, he could not recognize it. Everything is a change. And instead of a little cabins, is a buildings. And instead of a forest, is a roads. And instead of a wild Indians, is a traffic cops. <laughs> Also, Columbus would be surprised to see such a big inventions like the radio, the telephone, the airplane, and the greatest American invention, the hot dog. <laughs> but tomorrow is going to be a big day for me. All of the night school classes, they're going to have a Columbus Day exercises in the main high school. Every class is going to do something. And my class is going to put on a play, and I'm going to be Columbus. Of course, some are not really going to sound like a Columbus because I'm speaking English too good. <laughs> well, I'm finishing this letter later, Mamma Mia. It's a time now for my night school class, and I'm going to hardly wait to see what is it like this play my teacher, Miss Pauling, is going to give us. America, I love you You like a papa to me From ocean to ocean Quiet, please, please All right, I'll call the roll Mr. Basco? Here Mr. Horowitz? Here. Yeah. Mr. Olson? Hey, yeah. Mr. Schultz? Miss Spalding, you are beautiful, you are wonderful, you are simply gorgeous. Well, Mr. Schultz, why that sudden outburst of affection? Because I didn't do my homework today. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, you know that every time you come in without your homework, I keep you in after school. Now, why do you insist on coming in unprepared? Miss Spalding, you want I should answer you in front of company? <laughs> Mr. Schultz. Uh, don't bend your many shoulders. You make me so mad. Our fine city spends money, so you should get an education, but you just waste it. Now, look at me. I'm looking. I give up evenings with my family just to come to school. I, I give up gymnastics. I give up bowling. Olsen, why don't you just give up? <laughs> oh, please, please, let's have no arguing. Mr. Schultz, I'm keeping you in after school. Ah, she still loves me. <laughs> That's enough, Mr. Schultz. Now, class, as I told you last week, tomorrow we're holding the Columbus Day ceremonies at Franklin High. Uh -huh. And I don't suppose we have to review the facts about Columbus' discovery. That's right, Miss Spaulding. Everybody knows he discovered America in 1492. Thank you, Mr. Basco. Don't thank Luigi, thank Columbus. <laughs> I have here a copy of the little sketch you will present tomorrow night. Oh. It runs only three pages, and it concerns Columbus' trip to America. Uh, Miss Spaulding, if I may be permitted an interruption, we, we all accept the fact that Columbus discovered America. But the real truth is, someone else did before him. Olsen, how can you talk like that? But that's a fact, Luigi. A fact? Olsen, sometimes you're not so smart. I'm sorry, Luigi, but someone else did discover America. He's right, Mr. Basco. What? 
Who did it? Another Italian. Amerigo Vespucci. <laughs> oh. Uh, you know, Alcina, you're really smart. <laughs> <laughs> For a minute, you were worried, eh, Luigi? Oh, well, uh, well, I'm sure I know. Alcin is never wrong. <laughs> As a matter of fact, class, uh, uh, Columbus discovered America by accident. He was really looking for a shorter trade route to the Indies. Olsen, I bet you could even uh, tell us where he looked like. Yo, yeah, I can. Yo, yeah, according to the books I studied, Columbus was of medium height, rather stocky, black hair, with flashing gray eyes and a tiny scar on his shin. If anybody sees this man, notify the police or your local... <laughs> class, I would like us to make a fine showing tomorrow night. Our principal, Mr. Petrie, will be there, as well as Mr. Campbell, head of our board of education. You know, the night school session is his pet project. Don't worry, Miss Spalding. We'll do a fine job. And I'd like to delegate somebody in the class to supervise the presentation of the Columbus play. Miss Spalding, uh, who's that going to be? Oh, Mr. Basco, I was thinking of you. Me? I'm a spoiling it. Is it too big an honor? Go ahead, oh, Luigi. You'll take it. You'll be fine. Oh, oh, I see you have the backing of the class. Now, here's the play. Now, you assign the parts. I'm sure you'll have no trouble memorizing it. It's very short. Miss Spaulding, I got a bad memory. I can't remember lines. Well, you have to play some part. All right, then make me the ship. <laughs> Horowitz, do I detect an error? Did Columbus come over on one ship? Certainly, the Mayflower. <laughs> oh, Horowitz, even I know better. Was three ships. That's very good, Mr. Schultz. Suppose you name them. With pleasure. The name of Columbus' three ships was the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Anita. <laughs> Well, you knew the first two, but you guessed at Santa Anita. At Santa Anita? What else can you do? <laughs> Miss Spalding, Miss Spalding, when we're doing this play, can I give it the parts to anybody I'm like? Oh, yes. It's all your responsibility, Mr. Basco. Now, you put those pages in your pocket and don't lose them. And I'm sure I'll be very proud of you tomorrow night. Oh, don't worry, Miss Spalding. You will. We'll be a knockout. Oh, like they say in Hollywood, gigantic. Oh. <laughs> gigantic? Why, we're going to be so sensational, they'll make us put on a Thanksgiving Day play, a Christmas play, a Lincoln play, and on July 4th... Yes, Mr. Schultz. A legal holiday. We take the day off. <laughs> my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Hey, Pasquale, guess what? Tomorrow, I'm going to be Columbus. What? Sure, it's all decided. I'm going to be Columbus. All right, Luigi, and I'm going to be Napoleon. <laughs> now, let's us two nuts go out and talk to the squirrel. <laughs> You don't understand. You see, we're going to have a Columbus Day play tomorrow. It is in my pocket, and tomorrow morning, Schultz, Horowitz, and Olsen, they're going to come to my store, and we're going to rehearse. Oh, wait, them. wait. Slow down, little banana nose. <laughs> Ain't you ashamed of yourself? A big fella like you. Marriageable age. <laughs> Acting in a play like a little schoolgirl. Huh? Luigi. Instead of fooling around with that a night of school, with that two and two is a four, and three and one is a five... Wait, wait, Pasquale, you all are wrong. Three and a one is a not the five, and three and a one is a four. Three and a one is a machine oil, and don't tell me about it. <laughs> Instead of fooling around with this a baby play stuff, you should have been thinking about your home, your wife. Pasquale, what are you talking about? I'm not to got a home, a wife. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, this can be arranged. No, no, Pasquale, please, I'm not talking now about your daughter, Rosie. Why not? And don't tell me because she's weighed 250 pounds. <laughs> Luigi, sometimes you don't use your ignorance. <laughs> Think of this. What would you rather have, a skinny, nervous, underweight wife or a big, happy, overweight wife? Pasquale, I'm like a nice medium girl. You're going to take what I got. <laughs> Please, please, Pasquale, I'm going to go now to my store and figure out who's going to do what in my play. All right, go, go, go. Look who's going to play Columbus. 
You look like more like one of the barnacles that was out of the ship. That's <laughs> why I'm not going to be a good Columbus. Now, if you excuse wait, me... Wait, wait, Luigi. The reason you don't want to marry Rosa, that's because you don't spend enough time with her. I'm just a think. Why don't you put her in your play... You get to know her better, you begin to like her. No, Pasquale. Don't talk her so fast. <laughs> There's a part for a girl, a Columbus is to go to Queen Isabella. Rose is a beautiful. She's a look like a Queen Isabella. She's a look more like the Queen of Mary. <laughs> <laughs> now, Pasquale, no, no, don't push. I'm going to go to my store now and take the three pages and copy out all the parts and... That's the matter, Luigi. Pasquale... Pasquale, my play, I'm... I'm had it right here in my pocket, and now it's missing. Luigi, don't be stupid. How could your pocket be missing? <laughs> Not in the pocket of Pasquale. Not in the pocket of my play. Where is it? Where it could it be? Search me. I mean, uh, uh, go look. <laughs> I don't know. Mamma mia, it's terrible. Maybe I'm left in a trolley car. I'm going to go out to look. Pasquale, if you find the please let me know. Sure, sure. <laughs> I'm going to let him know. I'm going to let him know nothing. Come on, out of Papa's pocket, little Columbus play. My, my, three beautiful pages. Six beautiful pages. Twelve beautiful pages. Uh, what's the difference? There's a lot of pieces. <laughs> Second act of Luigi Vasco's Adventures in Chicago, we turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. And I saw Mamma Mia, I'm in a terrible trouble. After I'm left to Pasquale last night, I'm a turn at Chicago up beside her down and looking for my play. Near the school, I'm gonna see a cop and I'm gonna say. Please, did you see my Columbus play? Cops said to try the handball court. Maybe he's there. But a cop is no help, so for hours I'm walking around in the streets looking and looking and looking. All I'm found was a two pennies, a high bounce ball, and a one a Charlie transfer for a good till a 9 p.m. Easter bond. <laughs> Again, I'm a keep looking. In the gutters, the sidewalks, the garbage cans. One old lady is following me for two blocks, and then she's put a diamond in my hand, and she's say, you poor man, I'll take this for a cup of coffee. <laughs> I'm going to tell a lady, please, you got a wrong idea. I'm a no selling a coffee. Anyways, the morning now, I'm a tired from a no sleeping, and any minute my friends, they're going to come in to rehearse the play that I'm not the guy. Luigi, my fellow pooper. <laughs> well, am I the first one in for rehearsal, or am I the rotten egg? Oh, sure, this is a bad news. I'm a lost the Columbus play last night. Lost the play? Oh, no, Luigi. Did you look for All it? over, all night I was looking the streets, and all ladies want to buy a cup of coffee for me, and the coppers had told me Columbus was a playing a handball. <laughs> oh, Luigi, are you for shimmered? <laughs> now, look. Are you sure you lost the play? I'm sure oh, it's a terrible. <laughs> smile, Luigi, smile. Like the cow said when it tripped and fell down. What's the use to cry over spilled milk? <laughs> <laughs> Mother Schultz, how am I going to smile? It was my responsibility. I'm a lost the play. I'm not got to Miss Pauling's telephone number. School is a close. I'm not going to find it. Schultz, I'm a feel it so bad. No, I wait, 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 Luigi. Into my head, an idea just pooped. <laughs> After class tonight, we, we was all looking at the play. Yes, sir. Well, I remember most of you it. You do? Sure, sure, smile, Luigi. And what I don't remember, I'll write myself. Well, Schultz, sir. Schultz, you think you know enough about the Columbus to write this a play? Oh, Luigi, don't worry. Facts ain't everything. Writers always use it, the imagination. Now, look, look at Mark Twain. He never owned a fruit stand. Still, he wrote Huckleberry Finn. <laughs> Luigi, what's the use to waste time arguing? What else can we do? Well, hey, I... Luigi. Oh, hello, Mr. Delicatessen, man. What are you doing here? Until you came in, I was breathing fresh air. 
Herr Squali, now, if you don't mind, we are busy. I got to write a new Columbus play for Luigi because he lost the other one. That's right, Pasquale. Schultz says he's going to remember most of the play. Oh, that's nice. Schultz, maybe you write in a part for my daughter Rosa, eh? Absolutely not. In that the case, maybe I'm going to go to the school tonight to tell Mrs. Spalding, and maybe she's going to decide it would be better if you have no play at all, eh? What? Uh, you want to do a thing like this? Squally, would you be a stool pigeon? When it's a concern of my daughter Rosa, I'm even going to be a vulture. <laughs> Luigi, we are trapped. All right, we give a part to Rosa. No, wait, wait. It's even a help. Horowitz has got such a bad memory. Instead of giving him two parts, we're going to let Pasquale play one. <laughs> Thank you, Schultz. I'm going to like it to brag, but my wife, she thinks I've got a profile like a Barry ball. <laughs> I think you got a profile like Barry Fitzgerald. <laughs> hey, Schultz, here comes Olsen and Horowitz. Yeah, now we got no time to lose. Right. Give me quick a pencil on the paper, and we start to write. Well, Schultz... Schultz, I'm afraid. Ach, Luigi, cheer up, smile, don't worry. Tonight, when all this is over, it will be an experience you will never forget. Then, pale and worn, he kept his deck and peered through darkness. Ah, that night of all nights. And then a speck, a light, a light, a light, a light. It grew a starlit flag unfurled. It grew to be time's burst of dawn. He gained a world. He gave that world its greatest lesson. On, sail on. That was Henry Robinson of the graduating class of the LaSalle Street Night School, reciting the poem Columbus by Joaquin Miller. And very good indeed, Mr. Robinson. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we close our Columbus Day program with a short playlet to be performed by our charming Miss Spaulding's night school class up at North Halsted Street. As they say in show business, take it away. Go ahead, Luigi. Go out on the stage and read what I wrote. All right. How do we get ready? You come on the stage after me. Hello, ladies and, and a gentlemen and a friends and, and a Mr. Spaulding and, and a Mr. Petrie, that's the principal, and, and a Mr. Campbell, that's the board of education and, and a friends and a, and a friends and a ushers. Columbus! Christopher Columbus uh, was a discoverer of America on a Columbus a day. <laughs> the October 12th, 1914 and 92. This period of the 1490s was a very happy period and is now known in history as the gay 90s. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Narrator. To discover America was not such a cinch. History proves that Columbus had a tough time. Now, to give you a glimpse, we turn back the pages of history to that famous scene between Columbus and Queen Isabella. Come with me and glimpse a little. <laughs> Queen Isabella, I'm going like to ask you a bigger favor. What can I do for you, Columbus? <laughs> <laughs> Queen I'm a wish to discover no route to the Indies. I'm asking you for ships. No. All the explorers I give ships to, they never come back. This is because the world is flat and they fall off the edge. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, no, Queen, the world is not flat. It's around. Here, I'm a prove it to you with this egg I'm a brought. I'm a stand it on the table. Watch. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, Schultz has forgot to boil the egg. <laughs> brave voids from a brave man. Columbus convinced the queen and got three ships. The Nina, the Pinta, and the... Uh, uh, it was three ships, believe me. <laughs> but did Columbus have an easy time on the ship? Toying back the pages of history for another glimpse. Another day still in no land. That's no good. Where's my first mate? 
First the mate, aye, aye, sir. <laughs> First the mate, the reader, the ship's a lag. Uh-huh. <clears throat> On the fifth day, the main sail fell down. <laughs> the eighth, ninth, and tenth days, we went through a hurricane. Uh, the sixteenth day, a fire broke out in the gangway. Uh, the twenty-second day, the Nina and the Pinta disappeared. <laughs> All last week, it was raining terrible. And yesterday, the cook fell overboard and got swallowed by a shark. <laughs> Captain Columbus, I'm afraid. Why? Any day now, we may run into bad luck. <laughs> Captain Columbus, shall we turn back? Like I'm always a say, sail on, sail on. Brave voids from our brave men. A few days pass. Again we glimpse. <laughs> Captain, it is now 34 days we've been sailing. Still no land. What are your words? Sail on, sail on. <laughs> well, it's a little hard to, Columbus. We just sprung a leak. <laughs> a leak? Well, that's a terrible. First of all, what are you going to do to stop at the leak? Well, I already got a pan under the ship. <laughs> but it don't look so good because now land. the pan is... Look, oh. look, everybody, land. Brave voids from... Wait, a... wait, wait, the Horowitz. Sail on, sail on. All right, the Horowitz. Brave <laughs> man. So this brave discoverer finally found land. And he deserved it, too. Anyway, he and his first mate went up on the beach, and all they saw was Indians. So now, let's take our last glimpse. I am a Columbus, sir. I am a discoverer of this land. Any one of you Indians can I say a few words? Omo, a big tay, a mele, tipe, a yawawa. Huh? What do you say? Is that all you can say? You only ask for a few words. <laughs> But me have a daughter who's a speak very well. Then I call her out. All right. Pocahontas. 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 You call Yes, my little papoose. <laughs> this is Columbus. Say hello to him. Pocahontas. <laughs> well, Columbus, it's time we claim the land. All right. In the presence of the people of this new land, the men of my ship, the birds in the sky, the fish in the ocean, I'm now make a circle. And I'm here by name of this place, Columbus Circle. <laughs> shoes, shoes was a terrible. What? The way people was laughing at oh. us. I'm, a, I'm a sure it was the worst thing they ever saw. What are you talking about, Luigi? We were sensational. Olsen, Horowitz, what do you think? I don't know. I was too nervous to think. <laughs> well, I, I told you, Schultz, uh, some of those things you wrote. Who was, uh, perpetrated oh. this ridiculous outrage? Mr. Basco, what happened to the play I gave I'm you? I'm spoiling. I'm explaining. Oh, was... our Columbus. So you're responsible for this. Well, what have you got to say? Don't just stand there. Say something. Sell on, sell on. <laughs> brave words from a brave... You keep quiet. <laughs> but it was all of my fault. It was all of my fault, Mr. Principal. I'm lost the play Miss Budding has given me. I was not able to carry responsibility. You're absolutely right. You made a laughing stock of me in front of Mr. Campbell. I'm going to have you expelled from night school. Expelled? Oh, but Mr. Peter. I've made my decision. Yeah, but, but, but you can't do that to Luigi. He loves school too much. You, you break his heart. If you throw Luigi out, I'm quitting school too. Even if it means spending evenings home with my wife. <laughs> Mr. Principal, my opinion is... Wait a minute, please. Uh, Mr. Principal, uh, you can't uh, suspend uh, Luigi. I'm uh, the one who brought him from the old country, and I'm going uh, know how much his education is a mean to him. I was the one who uh, took away the play from Luigi and tore it up in a little pieces. What? Pasquale, you did that? I'm sorry, Luigi. 
I've heard enough. My order remains. And, Miss Spaulding, I want to speak to you tomorrow, too. <laughs> Put a pan under the ship. <laughs> I haven't heard that one since Potash and Perlmutter. <laughs> Petrie, you old sourpuss. What ever got into you allowing such a wonderful bit of entertainment on your program? Well, Mr. For 20 Kepler, I... years, I've been hearing the same old poem play and pageant. Uh, uh, who was responsible for this sketch? Columbus Circle. <laughs> this man right here, Mr. Luigi Basco. Uh, uh, young man, they'll they'll teach you a lot of things in night school, reading, writing, and arithmetic. But but you've learned one of the most important things we can teach you. Yes, one of the great qualities of an American is the the ability to laugh at himself. Isn't that right, Peter? Hmm? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-three days, they sailed. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to spawn me, all right. Believe me, there's a lot to laugh at. <laughs> not, not even I'm going to laugh. <laughs> I'm a laugh for two. Come on, Arosa. <laughs> laughing at who? So, Mamma Mia, even though it was a look very bad for me, everything is come out fine. I was very happy tonight, laughing a lot, and I had a funny thought. You know how there's a city in the United States called Columbus, Ohio? Well, I was just thinking, what would happen if your son Luigi was to discover America? At the city would be called Bosco, Ohio. <laughs> All of a sudden, instead of a Columbia Records, it would it be Basco Records? Would it be a Basco Picture Company? Basco Broadcasting System? And in a school, all the little children, they would be singing Basco, the gem of the ocean. Lovely <laughs> Luigi Basco, little immigrant. Be sure to listen next Tuesday at the same time over most of these stations when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco describing his adventures in America. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mac Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Mary Schiff as Miss Balding, and Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olson. Music is under the direction of Lud Gruskin. Bob Stevenson speaking. CBS tops off its Tuesday's programs with one of the greatest quiz shows on the air, Hit the Jackpot. Al Goodman and his orchestra are on hand to bring you some of the famous Goodman brand of music. And Danny Seymour is here to quiz studio contestants and listeners from coast to coast. Have you tried your wits on the current secret saying? Well, stick around and stay tuned for Hit the Jackpot, which follows immediately over most of the same CBS stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.